It is Unafraid Show mail bag time. These are your questions that you sent in to at George Reister, at Unafraid Show, or to the email, I'm mad, I-M-M-A-D, at unafraidshow.com. Let's get to your questions, people. Number one, let's assume the Carolina Panthers get the number one pick in the 2025 NFL Draft. What do they do? And will QBs even want to play for them at this point? Oof, that's a tough one. Because number one, yes, any quarterback is going to want to be the number one overall pick. But with the way that they have set up Bryce Young for not success, nobody really wants to sign up for that. Because this team with David Tepper, he has been impatient as an owner. He's made several coaching changes, several general manager changes. And he's done the exact same thing with his soccer team as well. So if there's instability at the top, then of course it's going to trickle down to the players as well, especially when the owner is not letting the football people make the football decisions. And last year, they screwed up with Bryce Young. Not because Bryce Young's not a good player. It's because they should have started Andy Dalton. They should have done exactly what the New England Patriots are doing with Drake May. Their head coach over in the Patriots, Gerard Mayo said, Drake May's our best quarterback, but we're starting Jacoby Brissett. Why? It is that just because you are the number one pick or a first round pick doesn't mean that you should start. You should start when you're ready, number one. And number two, when there is a situation around you that is conducive to create success. And that's not what the Carolina Panthers have. And the Patriots are trying to build that. Next question. An ESPN report says that the Dolphins are insured for around $49 million of Tua Tagovailoa's contract, but speculates that it's possible that no one would have insured him against concussions because of the two that he already had. Do you think the Dolphins' ownership has a financial incentive to push Tua and try to get him to play again? 100%. And this is on a two-fold scenario. Because number one, if Tua cannot get cleared by doctors, the Dolphins are going to owe him $125 more million dollars on top of the 42 that he's already been paid this year. But now, if he can pass a physical in March and then is released after that, they'll only owe him $50 million. So yes, they want him back on the field for two reasons. Number one, their football team because they don't have a quarterback. And number two, their salary cap issue because this, if Tua has to retire, that is going to be dead money that goes against the cap, which is going to hinder the Dolphins and their future immediately because you got Tua, you got Jalen Waddle, you've paid people to win now and without Tua, not sure you can win now. Which fan base should be most frustrated about being 0-2 after spending a fourth of the team budget on their quarterback? Is it the Bengals, the Ravens, or the Jaguars? Oh, for me, this is easy. It is by far the Jaguars. You're not even 100% sure right now that Trevor Lawrence is ever going to be, that you're going to feel good about that $55 million a year that you paid him. Because when you're watching Joe Burrow, and yes, they just lost to the Chiefs, you're like, okay, he still did some really good things. He still looks like a very good quarterback. Nothing to really complain about there. And one of the Ravens' two losses was against the Chiefs. So now... With both of those teams, you you played the champs, you played them close, and Lamar Jackson is literally carrying this team. So, yes, you feel good about your quarterback if you're the Bengals and the Ravens, but the Jaguars, I don't know at this point in time. Number four, the Eagles are giving up 30 points per game over their last 10 games. In their 2022 Super Bowl run, they gave up 30-plus five times in 20 games. What happened and who do we blame? Well, their defensive coordinator is now the head coach over with the Arizona Cardinals. So, yes, it matters. And part of it is, is that their owner, Howie Roseman, has refused to invest in linebackers. They've drafted some, but they've paid outside linebackers as a group 62% less than the league average in 2023. And they let both TJ Edwards and Kazir White leave in free agency for only about $12 million per year. And now as their defensive coordinator, they got Vic Fangio. 
who they wanted to coach the defense in 2023, but they're still giving up 315 yards rushing in two games. That's not going to cut it. Number three, are the Kansas City Chiefs the luckiest team in the NFL when it comes to officiating? Or was that pass actually pass interference at the end of the Bengals game? That was actually pass interference. Anybody who's not being completely biased and ridiculous can look at that and see, oh yeah, that was pass interference. He hit him before the ball got there and it caused him to jolt and not be able to catch it. We're like, yeah, but he backed into him. Okay, how many times have we seen a pass interference on an underthrown ball? All the time. The receiver might not be able to catch it, but if he goes and makes an effort, it's pass interference. It, it's a tough call. It sucks. And people are like, the Chiefs are so lucky. They always get the benefit of the doubt. Well, when they played the Bengals in the AFC Championship game, that was a late hit out of bounds. This was a pass interference. Maybe, maybe just maybe, if you don't want a bad cause to go against you, don't commit penalties. And for six through 10 of the mailbag, we got to go with the contenders or pretenders part of the program. So we got a couple teams here and they're all two and zero. First up, the Minnesota Vikings, contenders or pretenders. Ooh, I'm putting a contender tag on them right now because this team with Sam Darnold, they clearly have weapons with Justin Jefferson and company. And this team is playing good defense. Sam Darnold is not being the turnover machine that he was at USC with the Jets or with the Carolina Panthers. He looks like a competent quarterback. And maybe that's because he's in a second consecutive competent situation. He was just in San Francisco, got a chance to sit, learn, came in and played well against the Ravens. And then now, good weapons around him, solid head coach. Oh, stability. Oh, now all of a sudden he can play good football. It, it, it's not rocket science. The New Orleans Saints at 2-0. Uh, excuse me? This team is averaging 45 and a half points a game. They are contenders right now. We have never seen this level of play out of this team on offense and defense since Drew Brees and them winning a Super Bowl. Like, that's the last time that we saw it. So the New Orleans fans can be excited because they are contenders. Contenders to win the NFC South. And if you win that NFC South, now you got a chance because it looks like this show will be able to travel. That this is the way you play football, running the ball and the quarterback passing the ball efficiently. Alvin Kamara, who's technically in a contract year, oh, all of a sudden he balled it again. Four touchdowns last week. And uh, yes, they are contenders. Next team, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Pretenders. Pretenders in terms of a Super Bowl winning type team. But are they contenders week in and week out? Or are they a tough out? Yes. Justin Fields at quarterback. And people think, oh, Justin Fields should be cemented as the starter now after a 2-0 start. No. He hasn't done anything that you would say that he has stamped that this is his team. Has he done exactly what Bears fans wanted him to do, which is not turn over the ball and, like, take the Hippocratic oath for quarterbacks, which is do no harm. And that's exactly what Justin Fields is doing. He's doing no harm. He's not doing anything elite or spectacular, but he's doing no harm. And occasionally he's making a play. So for him to take over and there be no more Russell Wilson talk, he still needs to play within himself and not try to be the hero, but he's going to have to do some special things for everybody in that locker room to buy in as him as the quarterback. Oh, now we got to talk about them L.A. Super Chargers with Jim Harbaugh. Now, I did not expect this team to be 2-0. But Jim Harbaugh, he knows how to build football teams. Physicality and running the football. The problem is, is that this team is not quite talented enough to be able to be contenders against the Chiefs in the AFC West. Are they going to make games hard and difficult? Yes. But my question is, though, why are you paying Justin Herbert so much money when you're asking him to be J.J. McCarthy? Now, you don't have to, to have to let him go out and throw the ball 50 times because that's not the makeup of your team. But Justin Herbert does have that capability and that playmaking ability. 
So this Chargers team, number one, has to keep him upright and also has to find a pass game because they're going to need it at some point in time. The last team up is a contender tender in any shape, way, form, or fashion. That is the 2-0 Houston, Texas. Oh, them boys are good. Oh, C.J. Stroud is good. Tank Dale, catch the ball, brother. Um, good. Stephon Diggs fitting in. And their lead wide receiver, Nico Collins, balling. This defense with Will Howard looks looks good. They were getting so much pressure on Caleb Williams. Man, I am impressed. They look like the class of the AFC South and a legitimate shot, not just to reach the AFC championship, but to make it to the Super Bowl. And you guys, that's the NFL mailbag for this week. You guys, make sure that you guys send in your stuff to at George Reister, at Unafraid Show, or I'm mad, I-M-M-A-D, at unafraidshow.com. And most importantly, share. Share this with a friend. Go down, click the button right now, and tell a friend. Share it with them. Email it, text it, Reddit it, whatever you need to do. Let's grow the show.